International, our brothers in the Lord. We thank you, dear God, for <clears throat> our brother who is going to present to us this evening. Uh, we thank you that you're going to bless Danny this evening. We thank you for your spirit to empower him, to, to bless him, to use him, all for your honor and to your glory. We thank you, dear God, that we can, at this time, with the use of the technology, we can meet and speak and greet one another, no matter where we are in the world. And we are grateful to have Danny all the way from Ghana with us this evening. So I thank you, dear Father, for your anointing upon him this evening. May you bless him. And our Father, I thank you. You bless his home, bless his family, bless his business, bless all that he put his hands to do. May you crown him with a crown of glory. May you continue to use him in the ministry and in the promoter full gospel. I thank you for his business, for his family. I thank you, dear God, for his life and all our brothers in Africa. May you bless them and may you bless the, the whole continent, oh God. We thank you for blessing all our chapters throughout the world at this moment. And all those who will be joining us, oh God, we thank you for bringing them this evening with us. So we commit him into your hands, O oh God, and we thank you for hallelujah time this evening. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So our Lord and our Master God in heaven, I just want to thank you for Trevor's life. Father, this is a man you have used in this ministry for so many years. You continue to bless him. You continue to magnify yourself in him. You continue to walk with him and you continue to light up his path. You continue to divinely provide for him and his family and the entire nation of Trinidad and Tobago. Even beyond that, Lord, in America, elsewhere, he's making impact and inroads. I pray that the Lord, you continue to use him. May you expand his coast. May you bless him just like you bless Jabez. May you give him the strength of Samson. May you give him the wisdom of Solomon. Oh Lord, may you give him, oh Lord, the confidence of David. Oh Lord, may you give him the favor of Esther and chart his course that, Lord, he will live to the full, fullest glory to glorify and to honor you in all that he does in Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Good night, dear Danny. Hey, 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 Good evening. How are you? Is that Ramesh? Yes, it is. Good to see you. Hey, Ramesh. How are you? Good to see Very you, too. Good. Wonderful. Good. Wonderful. Hi, hi. Good, good. Is that your daughter? Yes. <laughs> For 35 years. <laughs> Wonderful. How are you? Hi, mom. How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. Great. That's, Good to see you. That's a, the wife of my youth, boy. The wife of my I, youth. I know. She's looking very young. <laughs> you remember her well, yes. Of course, I remember her. We sat, we sat on, your, on your veranda. Correct. correct. 57 uh, years young this year. I know. You're looking so young. I had to ask uh, to be sure if that was a daughter oh. or the wife. All glory to God. Glory be to God. Yes, we praise him. Hallelujah. Mm, this is good. Yeah. Good to hear your voice. Good to hear your voice. Remember those days. Very good years, man. I know. I know. We have all aged. Eh? <laughs> but the glory is shining on us. Yes, it is. It is for sure. I know. I know. But somehow the men seem to get uh, older than the women. It's true. <laughs> You know, yes. you know why? No. Because we because we answer all the questions. And we worry more about them, right? Uh, exactly. Uh, as for worrying, I think they worry more about us than we do about them. Yes, 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 they do, yes, they do. But because they they do all the questioning and we do all the answering. <laughs> so we have to think more to say. Exactly. Great. So how is uh, family, business? Yeah, my, my son, Luke and Leah, they, they're, quite, they're quite good. And uh, um, the business is doing quite, quite well. Thank, thank God for that. And that's it. he's keeping us, you know, so it's an encouragement Wonderful. during this time. Great. Great. 
Yeah. Which, which no, other no, children no. is in the U.S.? No, no, my my children aren't in the U.S. Both of them are in, in Trinidad. Luke and Leah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, Rex, um, Rex's kids are Rex Badalu. His children are the ones in the in the U.S. In the U.S., yeah, that's right. right. If I remember, Rex yeah. was in insurance. Is that right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. He's a man. He's a man in insurance. Yeah, that's right. We went to his office and he gave me a, a mug, a tea mug, uh, and a pen. Oh, yeah, that's the man. That's Rex Badalu. <laughs> I still have the mug. I still have the mug and the pen. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we Amen. come Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hi, Danny. Hey. Good to see you, Boy, buddy. Neil. Good to have Amen. you online. Amen. God is good. God all the time. Blessings to China. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Nice to be here with you guys. Amen. China, huh? What part of China are you in? I'm in the south, in the city of Guangzhou. Okay, um, that, that's, I, do, I do business in that area. So what are you doing there in China? Yeah, I, I'm not really blending with the crowd well, but tell me. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing uh, trading. Trading, I do logistics as well. Then I'm working for the Lord. You got? Yeah. Uh, we didn't hear what you said. It was there was a blue. I again. said I, I do trading this evening. And um, so welcome, Neil. Welcome again to to Shagona's chapter meeting. Thank Glad you, to have you joining us. Thank you. And how and you forever. Welcome, Richard. Uh, I, I see we have some other people joining in here. Uh, Mr. Hubert Philip is here with us. Welcome. And uh, Brother Leonard, welcome to you. And Thank you. See, uh, we have a new visitor this evening, Mr. Roger Lamb. Welcome to our chapter meeting this evening. Shalom. I'm a, I'm a guest of uh, Brother Danny's from Hong Kong. Welcome, yeah. glad, we're glad to have you joining us. Thank you. Brother, Brother Roger Lam is, is a world speaker. He is a great publisher and he drinks, he eats, he sleeps, he talks, and he drinks money. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a good friend. that's a good friend to have. <laughs> yes, of course. Why do you think he's my friend? To <laughs> <laughs> start our meeting. Uh, shall we bow our heads, brothers? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace, for your love, for your mercy to us, that we could be gathered, Lord, from so many countries around the world, Lord, gathered together in fellowship under the banner of love. We thank you for your grace to us that, Lord, it is nothing that we could have ever done to deserve it, but your love is, Lord, so there, there, there aren't even words, Father. So we thank you for your grace, for your love, for this blessed privilege to be called at such a time as this. May you bless this meeting tonight. May you minister to Lord, everyone who's on the call and those that may have the privilege of seeing this when it's over, Father. May you bless our speaker tonight. May you bless those that are already in this room and those that would join us. We commit the entire meeting into your hands. We thank you once again in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. 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 For those of you who, um, that is all yours. Thank you very much, uh, Vishnu. I uh, want to thank I want to thank you once again. Uh, we we prayed together, and yes. uh, in the prayer, I directed the prayer to Trevor, as if I was <laughs> praying to Trevor. But you were covered in the prayer, Vishnu. Amen. God God bless you, brothers. Uh, I'm quite excited this evening um, because I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I feel that God has made it possible for us to meet today virtually. Indeed, God is doing a new thing. Now, in obedience to what God does for his children in the FGB MFI, I must say that I had a visitation of the Holy Spirit and it was so profound yesterday. 
Now, yesterday, about this time, there was an F tremor in Ghana, and it occurred three times. So the, first, the, the first tremor that happened, I was asleep, and so my wife woke me up. Shortly after that, the second tremor occurred. And wow, if it is anything to compare with how Jesus Christ's second coming is going to be, then brothers and sisters, I say, let us get ready. Because this is the first time I've had earth tremors, but this is the first time that it really shook. And I could feel the footsteps of God in that tremor. Brothers and sisters, I just want to tell all of us that indeed we serve a living God. Our God is real. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, um, quickly, I just want to give a short testimony of how God takes us out of trouble, especially when we have been assigned to do the will of God. Whenever any of us is assigned to do the will of God, and as we prepare, the devil begins to shake and he begins to worry because he knows souls are going to be won. Souls are going to be won. And his kingdom is going to be depleted. So what it does is to try and begin to shake our foundation. A similar thing happened yesterday. I just want to thank God that um, he took us out of what would have been a very disastrous accident. I went shopping with my friend, and just as my, my wife crossed the street and sat in the car, there was a nasty accident involving three vehicles just where she crossed the road and sat in the car. Mm. If this is not the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, I don't know what else it could be. I don't know what it could be. So I just want to thank God that he took us out of that, what could have been a fatal accident. And today I am here um, testifying about the goodness of God and telling brothers and sisters globally that we serve a living God no matter what. If the accident should have occurred and my wife was involved, I would have been in the hospital by now helping my wife and nursing my wife. And look at the souls that have gathered around the world virtually in a seminar. Brothers, let us keep on serving God because he is the same God yesterday, today, and forever shall be. As a full gospel businessman fellowship international member, um, it is only proper that I adhere to protocol by repeating our mission statement because it is on the premises of this mission statement that I'm going to give the delivery of the Bible character and which dovetails um, also my life testimony. And I'll try to do that real quick in good time so that we can have interaction and we can have questions and answers. Now, the mission statement of the Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship International, the FGBMFI is to reach men everywhere in the world for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To call men back to God. To train and equip men to fulfill the Great Commission. To help believers to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and to grow spiritually. To provide an opportunity for Christian fellowship. To bring a greater unity among all people of the body of Christ. This is the mission statement of the FGB MFI. So my, 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 my basically my um, testimony and my delivery of uh, the Bible study today is going to be fashioned around our mission statement. And I pray that the Lord God will visit our hearts, touch our hearts and reveal to us what he has chosen me, a mere vessel to minister, to share and to testify by his goodness tonight. Um, Vishnu, if I'm running too fast, please call my attention. And um, if I'm going too slow, please call my attention. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when I was invited to speak, I uh, prayerfully chose the Bible character, Daniel, 
And coincidentally, I am also called Daniel. And this is what the Lord uh, admonished me to choose and to speak about. Now, let us look at Daniel. Daniel in the Bible. Now, Daniel, what kind of history is contained in the Bible? That makes Daniel, or that highlights the prophet Daniel so much. And the cardinal point or the key points in Daniel's um, life or history, one is integrity. Two is God being his judge. Three, he had faith in God. So even in the face of death, he did not back down. And what makes Daniel special? Daniel inclined his ear to God's voice, and whenever he heard from God, he delivered God's message without any addition. He said it just as it was said. And for this reason, the king Nebuchadnezzar took liking to him, and I'll continue in that liking, many things that came about. And this day when all nations of the earth stand on the brink of disaster, the book of Daniel brings to attention prophetic messages of momentous imports. Whereas the Bible books of Samuel, Kings, and Chronicles are based on eyewitnesses' record of the history of God's typical kingdom, the Davidic dynasty, Daniel focuses on the nations of the world and gives four visions. Four visions being things that are going to happen are revealed to him by the Spirit of God. And he tells, it's as it is. And of power struggle of the great dynasties from Daniel's time down to the end of the world because Daniel predicted what the things that are going to happen before the coming of Jesus Christ. And all of this we'll find in the book of Daniel as we progress. Now, this is a world history written in advance. Can you imagine? History is normally written after the event. But in the book of Daniel, world history written in advance. Things are foretold. These are some of the things that makes the prophet Daniel so unique. Because some of the prophecies he gave and some of the revelations that he received and told the king are happening today. Now, it leads up to an absorbing climax in showing what is to come. Now, this world history that is written in advance comes to pass as events unfold. In the final part of Daniel's days, like Nebuchadnezzar, the nations have to learn the hard way, just as we are learning today in the midst of COVID-19. Nebuchadnezzar had to learn the hard way because of disobedience. Now let's see how things unfold. Nebuchadnezzar, we know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on him, but we know the kind of king that he was. And the things that led to Daniel, a Jewish captive who went with his three other fellows to the king Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. And because of the exigency of time, I will give the Bible verses but I will not explain all of them into detail so that we can also go and make research on the delivery I have done. Then we can also make questions, we can also make questions or additions, not necessarily questions, but we can make additional um, comments. Now, this world history, which is foretold, that the most high ruler in the kingdom of mankind and that finally he gives it to one like a son of man, the Messiah, and the leader, our leader, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And thus, these scriptures, as given 
to one like the son of man as Daniel, as is given to the Messiah, you can find them in Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. Please take note. Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. Daniel chapter 10, verse 14. Daniel chapter 4, verse 25. Daniel 7, 13. Daniel 14, 9 and 25. And then finally, John 3, 13 to 16. Interestingly, see how Daniel's writings goes into the New Testament. Hallelujah. We will get there. Now, by paying close attention to the prophetic fulfillment of the character of Daniel, the inspired book of Daniel, we will appreciate more fully God's power of prophecy and his assurances of protection and blessings for his people. These we can find also in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, where God is telling us, is assuring us of his absolute protection, not leaving or forsaking us. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, the fulfillment of Daniel's prophecies as we are foretold. What confirms that Daniel was an actual man? And during what eventful period did he prophesy? We all know how Daniel was brought in from a royal home into captivity to King Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. We know that story. I'm not going to elaborate on that. Now, the book is actually named after the writer. You know, in the Bible, not all the books that are written are named after the writers. But in this particular one, the writer is Daniel. And the book is named after him. So a lot of the stories are told by the man, by the writer himself. And this goes to emphasize the fact that he gave a vivid account of what is happening and what has happened and what will be happening. Hallelujah. Now, Daniel, in Hebrew, is Daniel. It is spelled D-A-N-I-Y-E-L, Daniel. That is a Hebrew name. And it means my judge is God, or God is my judge. And now, Ezekiel, who lived at the same time of, of, King, of Daniel, confirms that Daniel was an actual person, just like everybody confesses that Jesus, they saw Jesus, they sat with him, they ate with him, and he performed miracles, and they all saw it. That confirms that, Ezekiel confirms that Daniel was an actual person. It was not a, a fairy tale. <laughs> Naming him along with Noah and Job. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 14, gives this account. And Ezekiel chapter 20, 28, and 3, 28, 3, confirms this account of Daniel being an actual person. And seeing that he was an actual person, he told the story. And these were chronicled and they were confirmed in the actual happenings. Daniel dates uh, the beginning of his book as a third year of the kingship of Joachim. Jehoiakim, and Joachim, the king of Judah. Now, what is very, very important is the dates when Daniel, this date was 1618 BC, before the era of Christ, which we see BC, you know, before the era of Christ. Now, Joachim's third year as the governor of the area, he was the kingship, kingship of a certain area in the kingdom of King Nebuchadnezzar. Now, Daniel's prophetic visions continued down to Cyrus, the third year of his kingship, about 536 BC before Christ. Okay? 
Now, these are confirmed in the book of Daniel, chapter 1, verse 1. Daniel, chapter 2, verse 1. Daniel, chapter 10, verse 1 to 4. What eventual four years were covered by Daniel's life span? We are going to get to that very soon. And then when we, when we have gone through the eventual years, the events that unfolded during the time of Daniel, then we will go to the significance. Then we'll go to the interpretation and what it means for you and I as a full gospel businessman, men's fellowship member. And the examples of Daniel's tenacity will build us in the face of affliction. So I'm giving you the turn how this character Daniel in the Bible is going to take and how we, full gospel businessmen, fellowship, are supposed to, um, are supposed to walk our Christian walk. Okay. Now, or, or the Bible account tells us that then as a teenage prince, along with his noble Judean companions, you remember he went with Meshach, Sadrach, and Abednego. Well, these were these, uh, the Judean companions, the three who were with him. He was taken to Babylon to live through the rise and fall of the third world power. So you can imagine the third world power as we have world powers today. Daniel went into that kingdom, not as an ordinary kingdom, but it was a third world power. So there was a first, there was a second, and a third. So you can imagine. Now, this third world power, Bible history tells us that Daniel survived to serve as a government official in the fourth world power, Middle Persia, and we all know where that is. Daniel must have lived nearly 100 years, given that he was taken there as a teenager and he lived through the times of three kings up to Cyrus and beyond. Now, like I said, I'm going to dovetail this to the era of Jesus Christ. Now, when you go back and you say Jesus specifically names Daniel in his prophecy in the conclusion of the current era or the era of things before the coming of Jesus Christ wherein he makes several quotations from the book. Now, when you refer, I want us to refer specifically to the Bible course I'm going to give, and you see where Jesus Christ was referring to the era of Daniel. Now, thus we can find in Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. See also Daniel chapter 9, 27. And 11, 31. Now, when you go back to Matthew, when you go forward to Matthew chapter 24, verse 15, a reference of Jesus, and Mark 13, 14. Mark chapter 13, verse 14. Then you colorate that with um, Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And then Matthew 24, 21. And now Matthew 24, verse 30. Now, when you correlate these sayings of Jesus Christ and the references that I have given you in the book of Daniel, it confirms every bit of it, every single bit, every single bit of the prophecies that were foretold and what correct Jesus references that are made in these chapters of the book of Daniel. What two parts up of the book of Daniel is what I'm going to discuss now. And then I will fast track it. I'll fast track it. Um, now the first one, the first one is Daniel chapter one to chapter six, gives in chronological order the experiences of Daniel and his companions in government service from 617 BC 
to 538 BC. These are chronologically tabled in Daniel chapter 1, verse 1. And then Daniel chapter 21, you will find this. Chapter 1, verse 1 and 21. You find this chronologically. All that the book says, the various events, how they are going to occur, how they will, how they will occur, how they will unfold, the interpretation of that. And then we come to the second part, comprising chapter 7 to 12. Now, in the book of Daniel, chapter 7 to 12, gives us, it is written in the first person by Daniel himself as recorder and describes private visions and angelic interviews that Daniel had from about BC 553 to about 536. Isn't it amazing that this man, this young man had angelic interviews can you imagine being interviewed by angels and then you also interviewing the angels and asking them for explanations this can only come by god but brothers and sisters in christ one would ask why did daniel possess these abilities to interview angels and even angels interview him and giving him interpretations of what is yet to come. It boils down to one thing, faith in God, confidence in the faith as a follower of what is to come, Jesus Christ. And also Daniel was obedient. He was obedient. Um, forgive me. for that little interruption. Daniel was obedient unto his creator and he was obedient to the point of death that he did not want to defile that body, that physical body and that spiritual body and that bond between he and his maker. So what did he do? He decided not to eat the king's palatable food. And also he decided not to follow the culture of in the, in, the, in the king's palace or in the king's court. And this will unfold. These are some of the uniqueness of Daniel's characteristics. And I'm bringing all of these up so that the event, eventually we will learn from the character of Daniel what he stood for, why he did what he did, and why God decided to use him because he had all the attributes of a true prophet, and he was really indeed a son of the living God. Now, the contents of Daniel chapter 7, okay, what leads to Daniel and his companions entering Babylonian government service is what I'm going to say here. Many a times, for we Christians, when we are being trained, when we are being groomed in a place, we do not accept to take the lowest place. We want to start from the high place because perhaps because of our academic qualification, because of the family we come from, because perhaps we are royals, certain jobs are reserved for uh, royals. And so we don't want to take anything less than that. Perhaps if you have come from a royal home as an FGB MFI member and you are asked to come and serve water or even go to the table to take recordings of visitors, you will say, no, this one is reserved for commoners, so you will not do it. But in the case of Daniel, he accepted, as even though he came from a royal family, to go and learn, to be a student in the court of King Nebuchadnezzar. And by so doing, he learned the language, he learned the culture, he learned the tenets of the place, the psychic of the people in the, in the court, and so he became more like them. But what he had over them was the wisdom and the knowledge of the saving knowledge of God, which they did not have. He had that one edge about, over them. What they did not also have is the personal relationship with God that Daniel had. The people in the Nebuchadnezzar's court did not have that. 
and let us go. Let, let, let us observe this. Now, in 1617 BC, Daniel comes from Babylon with the captives. I've said that already. The sacred utensils from Jerusalem's temple came also with them to be stored in the pagan's treasure house. You know, we all know that the uh, Nebuchadnezzar was a, a worshiper of idols and they had pagan gods and all of that. But these utensils which were captured together with Daniel and, and, and his men were brought in to be stored in that courtyard where there were pagans. And you know, wherever the spirit of God goes with you, you will be preserved. And Daniel knew this. So what he did not want to do is that he did not want to, because you know, by association, you can be contaminated. So once they got into that courtyard, he did not want to be contaminated together with the utensils, and he was conscious of that. Now, how do we know this? Many things revolved in his heart not to pollute himself with the king's pagan delicacies and wine. Daniel proposes a 10 day test of only vegetarian meals. And he said, Cain, we are not going to eat of your food. We are not going to eat of your wine. We are not going to drink of your wine. But test us and see. Give all that you have to give to all the other people in the courtyard. But we will go on a diet of vegetarian, pure vegetarian, not taking wine. Because that is what we know, what preserves us. And the, he dared the king. So they said, okay. If they said they are not going to eat, you give them the vegetables. Let's see if they will survive to the glory of God. After 10 days, what happened? This young man, especially Daniel, was looking more handsome, more glorious, skin is looking better. He was looking fitter than before they went into confinement for that 10 days of vegetarian meal. What does that tell you? God, in his own wisdom, preserved his own in the midst of affliction. That is what every full gospel businessman fellowship international person should do. In the midst of affliction, you must rely on God. You must rely on the tenets, the vision, and the mission of the FGB MFI. And trust God to deliver you, even if he doesn't deliver you. Remember, your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And come on the day of judgment. You say, come, my hardworking and faithful servant. This is your crown. Come, sit to my right. Momentarily, you'll be suffering. Momentarily, you'll be shamed. You'll be named and shamed. Because that is what the king meant for these children. He said, oh, who are these children? They think they know better. They said they were not going to eat off my food. Let's see. After 10 days, they may be dead even, maybe. But that did not happen. Because of the faith Daniel and his compatriots had in God, they looked better after 10 days. Let us continue. Now, the test turns out in favor of Daniel and his companions, and God gives them knowledge and wisdom. You see, when you fast and you pray and you look up to God and you set up your eyes onto the hill where your help comes from, God speaks to you. He empowers you. He enriches you. And he assigns you for the purpose for which you have gone into that confinement to fast and pray. So when you need breakthroughs, my brother, full gospel member, fast and pray. Remember Daniel and his three compatriots. They fasted. They prayed. They did not defile their body. They did not defile their spirit. They did not defile their soul. With all that utensils and the good things in the, in the courtyard of the king. Rather, they look up to God. They were on water and vegetables. And God vindicated them by giving them wisdom, understanding, even in the midst of affliction. Now, let's see how these things turn out later on. Now, when God gave them the wisdom, and not only the wisdom did he give them, he gave them a new appearance. They were glowing. The Bible says they were glowing when they came out of the confinement. So you can also glow the same way in the midst of affliction or you are charging yourself to come out, to go and minister, to evangelize, to go and win souls, to reconcile men back to God. 
to create an opportunity for Christian fellowship. You are doing all of that. It calls for prayer. It calls for looking up to God. It calls for spiritual charging of your physical body, soul, and mind. Now, you want to do this. There is a purpose. What is the purpose? The purpose is for you to provide opportunity for Christian fellowship. And by the time you come out of that confine, confinement as a full gospel member who is fasting and praying in the midst of adversity, remember, your focus must be on God and not of the things of the world. Now, let us see how, what dream and interpretation does God reveal to Daniel? And how does Nebuchadnezzar show his appreciation? I'm fast tracking now. Now, dream of the dreadful image. Dream of the dreadful image. And this you will find in Daniel chapter 2, verse 1 to 49. When you read Daniel chapter 2, verse 1 to 49, it tells you about the revelation that God gave Daniel, the wisdom he gave him, the confidence and the deep description of that image God gave him from head to toe which he told the king that these things are going to happen. And he was not afraid to tell the king that, look, king, this is what is going to happen to you at this point. <laughs> and you remember, the aspect that, you know, freaks me the most is the clay. He says, this is where your kingdom is going to crumple. It's going to crumple. It's going to crumple. So, going on. In the second year of his kingship, probably dating from Jerusalem's destruction in 607 before Christ, Nebuchadnezzar is agitated by a dream. His magic practicing priests are unable to reveal the dream and its interpretation. Now, this is where Daniel's popularity was growing. God will always orchestrate. He will always orchestrate things in your favor. But during that orchestration, there will be turmoil. There will be accusation. There will be maligning. There will be all manner of things against you. But my brother, my sister, stand strong. Because every downfall or every setback is a setup for a comeback. Every setback is a setup for a comeback. Because in the things of God, when God is orchestrating things, he uses the seemingly foolish ways of the world to confound the wise and the similarly weak ways of the world to confirm the strong, to confound the strong, that he, God, will remain God. Now let us see the story of uh, Daniel. Let's continue. So, now the, the dreams came. The king was having dreams, and God was orchestrating these things to bring about Daniel's popularity in the king's courtyard. So what happened? He called the magicians. Come here. This is a dream I've had, because they always interpreted dreams to the king. And sometimes I believe they told the king what he, the king wanted to hear. And that made him happy. But not in Daniel's case. In Daniel's case, God wanted to use Daniel to inform the king that, brother, your kingdom is coming to an end. And if you don't heed to the interpretation Daniel is going to give you, you're going to become an animal. And the rest is history. So anyway... Now, these dreams were not, these magicians were not able to interpret the dreams. He offers them great gifts, but they protest that no one but the gods can show the king the thing that he is saying. The king becomes furious and orders that the wise men be put to death. Have you seen the orchestration? These wise men have been with the king all these years before Daniel and his henchmen came in. There is no Bible account that they were ever put to death. But this time, he ordered that they should be put to death. Now, why did he, have you, have you thought about it? Why did he say they should put them to death? Because if they did kill them, they were not going to be magicians anymore to interpret his dreams to him and to tell him what is, is to come but he ordered that they should be put to death. Since the four Hebrews are included in this decree, Daniel asked for a time to reveal the dream. Daniel and his companions prayed to God. 
have you noticed the similarities? Whenever Daniel was given, was faced with any challenge, the first thing he does is to withdraw and pray. Didn't Jesus Christ do, do, do the same thing? Whenever Jesus Christ was faced with any deep challenge, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Son of the Living God, Yeshua, always withdrew and he prayed to God the Father. And that is exactly what Daniel did. So Daniel said, okay, King, give us X, Z, Y, Z time to pray and we'll come back to you. And the king agreed. So they went on to pray to God for guidance. God revealed the dream and its meaning to Daniel, who then, he revealed it to Daniel, who then came back to the king. Hmm. And he goes before the king saying, there exists a God in the heavens who is a revealer of secrets. And he has made known to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, what is to occur in the final part of the days. And this you find in Daniel chapter 2, verse 28. So the king, because before Daniel spoke, God had revealed to the king what was going to come, but he didn't understand, he didn't believe it, and his magicians couldn't tell him. A stone strikes and crashes, and the begin, he, he begins to tell the king what the king saw. Now, that, Daniel describes a, a dream. He said it is about an immense image, the head of the image of gold, his breasts and arms of silver, his belly and uh, thighs of copper and its legs of iron with feet partly iron and partly clay. Wow. Partly iron and partly clay, he described. And that's exactly what the king saw in the dream. Daniel makes known to the king of Babylon that it is the head of gold, had the head of gold. After his kingdom, there will follow a second, a third, and a fourth. He told the king with so much authority. Wow. Finally, God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be brought to ruin. It will crush and put an end to all these kingdoms. And itself was termed to times indefinite. God is going to establish a new kingdom that will stand the test of time and it is indefinite. And this you can find in Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. Now I'm going to sum up as I will dovetail it with my testimony. Now summing up, now in, 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 in gratitude and appreciation, the king extols Daniel's, good, Daniel's God as a God of gods. The God of gods. And makes Daniel ruler over all the jurisdiction, jurisdictional districts of Babylon and the chief prefect over all the wise men of Babylon. Daniel's three companions are made administrators in the other provinces. And this you can find in Daniel chapter 2, verse 47 and 48. Now, what results from the three Hebrews? bold stand against image worship. You know, they refused to worship the image that was in the, in, 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 in the, in the, in the book court. How dare you? Slave boys, men in captivity, you are bold to say that you are not going to worship my God. They said, yes, we won't. Even if you kill us, we won't. Wow, who are these slave boys? They must be daring. There must be something different about them. Now, let's see what's unfolding. Three Hebrews survived the fairy furnace. Because they refused to worship the God in the king's courtyard, they were put in the fairy furnace. Daniel chapter 3, verse 1 to 30. Now, Nebuchadnezzar erects a mighty image of gold, 60 cubits, that's 88 feet high, and orders the rulers of the empire to assemble for its dedication. At the sound of a special music, all are to fall down and worship the image. Any who fail to do so 
are to be thrown into the burning fairy furnace. It is reported that Daniel's three companions, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, have failed to comply. They brought before the enraged king. They were brought before the enraged king where they boldly testify. Our God whom we are seven is able to rescue us, King Nebuchadnezzar. And I'm sure King said, what a cheek. Let's see. Now the image of gold that you have set up, we will not worship it today. We won't worship it tomorrow. We will never worship it unto eternity. Can you imagine a slave boy, somebody in captivity being bold to tell you this? I'm sure you'll be burning with fury. Exactly what happened to King, King Nebuchadnezzar in the case of Daniel and his three compatriots. Daniel chapter 3, verse 17 and 18 will give you the full account of the story. Now, filled with fury, King Nebuchadnezzar said, he orders and said, listen, make the fire hotter than usual. Throw this young man into the fire. Let them be destroyed. Be haste, be haste, be haste. Wow. Then it was made seven times hotter than customarily. Seven times hotter. Look at the figure seven. We will not go into numerology today, but look at the seven. Seven times hotter. Whoa. And that the three Hebrew boys were bound and thrown in. As they do this, there will be the would-be executioners are killed by the fire's flame. Not the fire itself, the flame. Do you see the orchestration God is doing here? It is not the fire that killed the prison officers, but what? It was the flame. So you can imagine how hot the fire was. Now, Nebuchadnezzar becomes, becomes frightened. What is this that I'm seeing? What is this that I'm seeing? Wow. Four men walking about unharmed in the midst of the fire, and the fourth is a resemblance of the Son of God. Now, the king was seeing a fourth person in the fairy fire, and what he saw was resembling the Son of God. What he saw there was the Son of the Living God. The resemblance was too beautiful. For him to describe, and he can only say it was the resemblance of the Son of God. Only he knew. Daniel chapter 3, 25 will tell you this. Now the king calls the three Hebrews to step out of the fire. Out they came on, on, on head, and the rest is history. Now, what is beneficial to us? I'm concluding on, on Daniel. I'm concluding on Daniel. What is beneficial to us? Now, what fine examples of integrity and prayerful reliance on God are to be found in the book of Daniel? Now, you remember the three Hebrew boys prayed. They refused totally to worship the God in the king's courtyard. Then, from then, God manifested himself in ways to prove to the king that these ones, they are undestroyable. You cannot destroy them. So as Christians, beloved in Christ, let us stand our grounds when we know our God will save us. Let us do things fearlessly because we serve a living God who says he will never leave nor leave us. He will never leave nor forsake us. All who are determined to maintain integrity in an alien world as we are today, would do well to consider the fine example of Daniel and his three companions, no matter how vicious the threat these continue to, to live by. You live by the divine principles. Now, when their lives were, were in peril, Daniel acted. So when your life is in peril, what you do is you act. You don't just sit there and pray. You must act. And what did Daniel do? He acted with counsel and sensibleness. And with respect for the king's superior authority. And that he did in Daniel chapter 2, 14 to 16. Now, when the issues were forced, 
the three Hebrew boys preferred the burning ferry, you know, to worshiping the adultery. When you're found as a full gospel businessman fellowship international, you are found in the case of corruption and then your position, or maybe your position and uh, compromising on lies. What will you do? Will you choose the lies against God? No. Choose the truth because God will vindicate you. Now, as a full gospel businessman, Fellowship International member, when you are supposed to go and salute and koto and book lit a, book lick a government because you will get your daily bread from there, will you do that? Or you will pray and say that king or CEO or president or minister, because I am a child of God, I will not do this. However, if you give me the contract, I will do A, B, C, D to the glory of God. Now, you must act sensibly. You don't go and challenge and confront. Use wisdom. First of all, you must pray and God will give you the words. And you go and negotiate for the same contract people are paying money for. You will get it because you have used God's wisdom. Now, and Daniel preferred the lions than to foregoing the privilege of um, being on it if you go and serve the idol. He said, well, let the lions eat me. You throw me there. I know my God will save me. And even if he doesn't save me, I'll still not serve your God. So that boldness, that confidence will tell whoever is pursuing you or persecuting you that, no, there must be something behind this person. Okay. Now, prayerfully, prayerfully, at every stage, we realize that Daniel and his compatriot, they prayed. And in prayer, when you pray and you ask God for something, be quiet and listen to God. Christians, we are found out of praying, 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 praying. We never stop to listen to God. Daniel listened to God. And that is when God gave him the words to speak. The words to speak. The time to speak. And what exactly to say. So brothers and sisters in Christ, full gospel business and fellowship members, when we pray, let us listen into God. Most of the times when what God tells us doesn't make sense because he's not an ordinary God. He's a God who knows ahead of us and behind us. And so he uses the seemingly foolish ways of the world. So what God will say does not always make sense. But by faith, Act and know and believe that you are acting according to God's instruction because he has said so and he will always vindicate you as Christians. Now, what four visions are recorded concerning the world powers and why it is faith strengthening to consider these things today? Daniel's visions are thrilling and faith strengthening to review. First, consider the four visions concerning the world powers and then consider all the others. Now, in this, I chose the Bible character Daniel because of integrity, because of tenacity, because of faith, because of action, and because of companionship and the world system in which we live today. That is why I chose the Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship International Seminar today for Trinidad and Tobago, the character Daniel. And coincidentally, I'm also called Daniel. And the question I keep asking myself, am I living up to the tenets of Daniel in the Bible? Can I live up to this tenet? Yes, I can. Because with God, all things are possible. And I say to myself, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Beloved in Christ, I came to know the Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship International a few years ago. Um, I, I, just about 30 years ago, I was a prosperous young man. Um, full of bounds in my feet because I've come from a good home. And by the grace of God, I started business. And uh, before the age of 30, um, I had gone through uh, bankruptcy. And so I was trying to find my feet. And with the network of my parents and, of course, good people that uh, my family is networked with, I uh, walk into good money after, uh, during the bankruptcy. And so... Uh, through the bankruptcy, I learned to pray because my wife was prayerful. And I learned also to be humble because I came to realize that money is not everything. But guess what? During my bankruptcy, 
um, I decided to um, change my business. So I went into farming and um, I uh, started growing pineapples and rearing cattle. And so over the years, um, let me say the first two years of my farming was very turbulent. Land issues and the cultivation, lack of experience. But the Lord God delivered us. In the third year, my farming business became prosperous. I started exporting pineapple um, from Ghana to France and Italy. And then our cattle grew. So we had a good head, number, good number of head. And through that, uh, business grew from cattle to timber. And now I was doing timber on a large scale. I was exporting timber to Italy, to France, and to Russia. So young man, I've got my bounce back. Now, I didn't get this bounce back until somebody who saw my predicament and apparently my wife was praying for me, my mother was praying for me, and my neighbors, who didn't, whom I didn't even know, were praying for me because of my, my lifestyle. Now, when it happened, what happened was that I was invited to the Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship International breakfast meeting. And at that breakfast meeting, the main speaker then shared his life story as my life story. And I thought the Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship International members had told this man to tell my story. Little did I know that God was orchestrating my deliverance and my salvation. So I went forward, gave my life to Christ, and uh, I became a born-again practicing Christian from that very moment. So what happened from that very moment, I went home happily, and I went to tell my wife, hey, honey, I am a born-again practicing Christian. My wife looked at me and said, you are born a what? <laughs> I thought it was a happy moment. But that was not to be because I've had, we've had too many challenges at home and she didn't believe that I could surrender to Christ to become a born again Christian. But that was a challenge. That statement challenged me. So I made a covenant with God. I said, God, really, if you have touched me and I've surrendered to Christ from this time, from this moment, I'm going to become a born again practicing Christian. Fast track, three, down, three years down the line, I want to thank God that he finished with me on that line. I became a full gospel businessman, Fellowship International member, and my life changed tremendously. I learned how to pray. I learned how to have um, devotion in my house with my children. I learned also how to um, fellowship with the full gospel members, how to serve, how to give testimony. It's not only about church, also how to read the Bible and understand it and how to pray. All of this, I learned it from the full gospel businessman, Fellowship International. Now, brothers and sisters, to sum up, I will say that my life has been transformed by associating and fellowshipping with the Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship. Now, another time I'll give my full testimony. For today, I just want to tell everybody on this platform that there is nothing you can do without God. For the God we serve is a God of yesterday, today, and forever shall be. Now, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord God delivers them from it all. What I have seen, what I have been through as a Full Gospel member, I've had very difficult times, very challenging times with brothers within the fellowship and without the fellowship. But the Lord God has delivered me from it all. Well, one cardinal point is that as a Christian, the Christian, Christianity is not a bed of roses. It is a bed of challenges as well. I have had ill health. I've suffered ill health. I had had to go under surgery. I had brain surgery a little over six years ago. And God delivered me through the prayers of Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship International globally. How to even pay for the surgery in the USA is another miracle. It took four some uh, Full Gospel brothers to contribute money, supported my family, and we went through it. To the glory of God, I must say that by the grace of God, I've gone around the world speaking on many chapters, giving testimony. And by the grace of God, I keep saying that, like in the book of Deuteronomy, promotion comes from on high. I never thought that I was one day going to become the international secretary of this fellowship. But through servanthood, through sincerity and honesty of service, I became an international secretary. I paid my dues and I did well. And I learned that when God circumcises, circumcises your spirit, he also circumcises your pocket. So I learned how to give a lot to the full gospel. And I have never lacked from that point. I have never, ever lacked. I say this to the glory of God, that whenever the occasion rises, God gives me divinely, provide for me and my family. 
And today I'm saying that, brother and sister, if you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, I want to tell you, Jesus Christ is alive today. He'll be alive tomorrow. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as I have 30 years ago, I surrendered my life to Christ. And ever since then, my life has never been the same. Now, I was faced with one big challenge. And the big challenge, I will not give details, but many of us in full gospel knew that in recent years on the passing of um, Richard Shakarian, um, a lot happened. And some of us will have to stand our grounds in the midst of mockery, in the midst of uh, backbiting, slandering. We had to stand tall and stand for Christ. And we were vindicated because we decided to stand on the side of truth. And we did. And we saved this beautiful, fam the beautiful family of the FGB MFI from crumbling or from going to the, into the hands of the enemy through falsehood. And today I say that to the glory of God, we are here because of the truth and integrity of our forefathers, the front runners, Demo Shakarian, and the people who made this fellowship great. And I know there are people around the world who stand tall to defend this fellowship. And I want to thank all of you for giving me this opportunity to address you this evening. Another time, it will only be my testimony and not a Bible character dovetailing my testimony. Thank you, brothers and sisters. God bless you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Danny. And we do it every Friday. We're already in Friday here. So we are, will be studying Daniel 9. So uh, Amazing. It's a double blessing for me for more information and more uh, clarity. Thank you so much um, for yep. the teaching and for also inviting me because you invited me to this uh, Bahama um, Trinidad uh, program. So thank you. Praise God. God bless yeah, you, my I'm brother. I'm also You're inviting good. everyone to, to join us in China. We, we really need your support. Just connect with us. I know the time will be a problem for you, but try. God, God is with you. Thank you. Thank Amen. you, Brother Danny. Richard, looking thank forward you, to seeing you in the flesh and, and on Zoom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, w I will visit Larry very soon when everything gets, uh, gets Amen. normal. <laughs> Don't worry. Amen. Hey, Larry. Brother Danny, I want to say something. Huh? Let's make it 100% today. I never opened my Bible till I was 52 years old because I didn't believe in God. Mm. And for the last two months, I have been in the book of Daniel. Let's just make it 100% tonight. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Because it is in the end times, and we need the book of Daniel right now. It's time for the seals to be opened. Yes. Mm. Come on. Wow. I, you know, and as George said a few minutes ago, I've never met you in person, but I know a lot about you. Because George is one of my best friends. You know, we've been many friends for many years. And I got Neil, my roommate from Honduras. And I know a lot of things about you. And you are a man of integrity. You're a blessing. Thank you, brother. You yes, are a brother. blessing to the full gospel, believe me. Because it wouldn't be where it is today if some words from you weren't spoken. Well, but and those words of, came from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Come on. <laughs> what what amen. a lot of you might not know uh, who haven't been with Danny physically, uh, when Richard Chikarian and Vanji were going to receive prayer, the strong oak tree that was standing next to Richard, as I caught yeah. Angie, was one Danny, <laughs> Manuel Yeager, <laughs> who has legs like oak trees. He is a very stout, strong young man, physically fit, and frankly intimidating if you... <laughs> <laughs> Life. And we ask for the oil of Gilead, the Lord, to cover her from head to toe in the name of Jesus. Man. And we pray that, oh Lord, your help will come on tomorrow, right now, even as we pray. Amen. And that, Lord, by Sunday evening, 4 p.m., she'll be given a testimony of your. Hallelujah. We just want to thank you and bless you because we have prayed Amen. in the name.